Let's do it. Let's do it. Eric Arnold back in the sports barn here to give you the NFL recap from Sunday. Uh, it's Monday, January 4th. Uh, we're going to recap, and then we got three college basketball picks for you. So, uh, Sunday, uh, one a good day, three and five. Uh, well, we had a nice unbeaten streak going, and now things are going south. Um, that's all right. I, I knew I didn't have a good slate. I, I just looking at my picks, it's like, this isn't right. This is not right. And it wasn't right. Let's see what we got wrong. Um, Cowboys, Giants, that one could have gone either way. I, I hate, <laughs> watched a lot of that game and I thought, I can't believe the Cowboys are this close. It just seemed like the Giants dominated that game. And if not for bursts of turnovers, um, would have won easily. Um, that, that damn fumble at the end there. Oh, man, you know. It sure looked like I was Cowboys ball, you know, that, that ref, I get, you know, look, you fumble, you're sitting on the ball, there's a pile. I don't think it's that complicated. I think whoever comes out of the pile with the ball has the ball and the Cowboys came out of the pile with the ball. And to me, that was Cowboys ball, but you know, this is the you know, officials, they're always going to do what they're going to do. And they gave the ball to the Giants. So that was the end of that game. The Giants, uh, Cowboys would have had, you know, they had a chance. They were right down there at the goal line. And, you know, uh, perhaps that was uh, the flaw in the thinking in that we're taking Andy Dalton in a got-to-have game. You know, I know Ben Jones is inexperienced or Ben Jones. That ain't right, is it? Daniel Jones. You know, who, who is Ben Jones? Who's Ben Jones? Is that Cooter? Is that Cooter from the Dukes of Hazard? Is that who Ben Jones is? Well, at any rate, me, it's just better to take the inexperienced quarterback than the, you know, I'm going to choke and puke on myself quarterback like Andy Dalton. So anyway, that one could have gone either way. We didn't get it. Uh, Pat's Jets. Um, I, I don't know what happened there. I didn't see any of the highlights. I guess the Jets are just the Jets. And, and did you really expect a win one for Adam game, I guess? I, uh, that, is that what I was doing? I was expecting that to happen? Yeah, that didn't happen. So, loss there. Uh, the Buccaneers, they look like they're rounding into pretty good offensive form heading into the playoffs. Two 40-plus efforts uh, leading them into their game at Washington next week. Don't know what happened there. Ravens blew out the Bengals. I don't know if the Bengals had COVID injuries or what. Um, Bills, they crushed the Dolphins. Uh, the Dolphins, I guess the Dolphins just went as far as they could go and probably their win at, at Las Vegas was their they're a high water mark, if you will. They could not go any further. So really great year for the Dolphins. Finishing second in the cover the spread championship. The Bills were the champions. Uh, Dolphins finished second. Nice year for them. Uh, the Packers easily beat the Bears. We were right about that. Uh, Russell Wilson did not get it done for us. This is another one I guess could have gone either way. The Seahawks took the lead by 10, covering the spread late, and then couldn't hold it. Couldn't hold it, got backdoored. Uh, so that was an L. And this was just, this was, well, this was bad. I want to talk about this. This was bad handicapping on my part because I did not realize that Doug Peterson was planning on playing Nate Sudfeld in this game. I just didn't have time to research it all. Didn't get that piece of information. If I had it, yeah, I may have been on another game other than this one. But for those of you that missed it and weren't watching the scintillating, uh, scintillating, not sc there's no sc in scintillating, scintillating uh, Sunday night game between two losing teams. The winner 
If it was Washington, Washington goes to the playoffs. If the Eagles had won, the Giants would have gone to the playoffs. So the Eagles are actually playing pretty well. They got behind early, caught up, lost the lead. Now they're down three, 17-14. The Eagles' defense is playing its guts out. We're into the fourth quarter. The clearly the best player on the field for both teams is, uh, I'm going to say both teams, was uh, Jalen Hurts. You know, he's making plays where there are absolutely no plays to be made with his legs. And he had scored two touchdowns running the ball. That would, uh, uh, and Doug Peterson takes him out. Takes him out. He's not hurt. He just had a preset determination of what he was going to do. And he puts in, not Carson Wentz, he puts in their third string quarterback, which is a guy named Nate Sudfeld. Nate Sudfeld, a guy that has no future in Philadelphia. He's not a guy that we're grooming to be the next backup or backup to the backup. This is a guy who was on our team last year, and we didn't dress him in the playoff game uh, against Seattle because we determined that Cade McCown, I think that's the guy's name, Josh McCown, Cade McCown, Josh McCown, Guy, it's 40 years old. We figured out that he was better, better than Nate Sudfeld. And lo and behold, that's what happened. Uh, Wentz got hurt, and we had to play McCown, a 40-year-old guy, uh, in a playoff game, which we lost. Actually, McCown played pretty well. But, you know, and, and watching Nate Sudfeld in action last night, I you know, it's like, well, I see why McCown played last year because he was head and shoulders better than Sudfeld. Sudfeld was awful. You know, he was immobile against a, the Washington pass rush, which is very good. So he had no chance at all. And it was basically, it, it was bad. It was, it was a team, watching a team tank in real time. Just throwing the game. They just threw the game. Doug Peterson just threw that game. And, and, and no one knows why. You know, it's like, did we do that to improve our draft position? In other words, we apparently now we're going to pick sixth. Had we won the game, we would have picked ninth. But it was just, it, it, was, it was bad. It was stupid. It was stupid. It, it, the Eagles had a chance to beat the Washington, I, I want to say the R word, but I know Washington, and we could have ended that a pretty bad season on a high note. We could have given some of our young players that good feeling of, you know what, uh, this is what it feels like to win in the NFL, and we weren't way off this year, so we can come back next year and feel good. Instead, they walk out with a sour taste in their mouth. What are you supposed to tell some of these players, you know, that veterans even, that did the work during the week and took the pain pills and whatever and went out there and broke their back trying to win the game. And the, the coach throws it in the fourth quarter. I mean, what are you going to say to them? Well, you know, winning's all that counts here. Oh, yeah? Really? You know, uh, what do we do next year when we're, uh, you know, eliminated at week 10? Uh, you know, are we going to be even able to field a team? You know, because we'll have players that'll go, okay, well, I know that we don't, we're not here to, you know, actually win in these meaningless games, so can I just tap out with a fake injury, or, you know, let me know, you know, I'll, I'll do what you want, but I know that winning is not important here. Um, oh, oh, don't forget now that for the next 10 years, we've earned a team that wants to kill us in our own goddamn division. How stupid is that? It, it, I know some of you Eagle fans that, you know, think that draft uh, position was important are saying, ah, fuck the Giants. Who cares about them? Who cares about them? I mean, I'll tell you what, uh, Pittsburgh, who's always better than the Bengals, every year they got to play those guys and they got to have their head on a swivel because the Bengals just lived to hurt the Steelers. I mean, <laughs> they... They just go out there, to, that's their Super Bowl. Twice a year, the Bengals play the Steelers, and they want to kill the Steelers. And so that's 60 minutes of having an inferior football team just take runs at your stars just because they hate your goddamn guts. And that's what the Eagles have now purchased 
with Doug Peters' idiotic decision to tank this game, screwing the Giants. Oh, yeah, the Giants are going to take runs at the Eagles for the next 10 years. Um, thanks, Doug. It's just stupid. Nate Sudfeld, we had a chance to win this goddamn game, and, and we threw it over for Nate Sudfeld? What the hell for? God, I mean, it was so bad. You know, I'm just talking to you from an Eagle fan's perspective. What about a National Football League fan, a neutral fan, a neutral? I mean, this is the uh, NFL's showcase game, this NBC Sunday night game. And here you have in front of the uh, you know, whole NFL fan base on your big stage, a team tanking, a team tanking. I mean, how embarrassing. I, if, if Roger Goodell had any brains, he would punish the Eagles. You know, he'd dock him a draft pick for that stunt. Um, well, what he should have done is not been asleep at the goddamn switch because we, Peterson made this public uh, lead, going into the game. Goodell should have seen this coming. Goodell should have, you know, just called up Jeffrey Lurie, owner of the Eagles, and said, you guys are not going to put Nate Sudfeld in this game in the fourth quarter. If you do and tank this game and fuck the Giants, I'm going to fuck you. And uh, But, of course, he didn't. So, you know, I expect no punishment for the Eagles. They should be. They absolutely should be punished. That was bad what they did last night. So, you know, to the Giants fans out there, on behalf of uh, at least some of the Philadelphia Eagle fan base. I apologize for that foolishness, that lack of sportsmanship. It was bad. Anyway, college uh, basketball. We got a handful of plays here. Uh, one thing I want to do is uh, we're almost at our anniversary date. Um, my next to uh, project, we're going to get a Twitter account up and running just so I can... You know, when I want to play, play, or make plays or something like that, and I don't have, you know, I got just enough time to handicap a handful of games, but I don't have enough time to make a video, that's where Twitter's going to come into handy, where I'm going to put the tweet out, this is who we're playing, and, you know, that's that. Then there's a record of it. Uh, so, you know, some of you subscribers that are interested in what we're doing in college basketball, uh, you're going to have to look for us on Twitter. Uh, and, and we're going to tweet stuff out as far as who we're playing there uh, to save time. Uh, yeah, there's still going to be videos. Uh, it's just that, you know, maybe one less a week just to kind of uh, truncate my schedule a little bit and give me a few free extra hours, which I desperately need. All right, college basketball. Uh, this is a top play uh, in the Big South. Um, yeah, I know you, you grumble because we like these off the wall games. Uh, Hampton at Radford. Uh, Hampton is, uh, for the most part, got it over Radford. Uh, they've covered like the last five or six against Radford. Uh, they're catching three and a half. Um, I, I like Hampton, you know. Well, let's stick with it. Uh, that's where we're going to go there. Now in a real game that's actually on, I think, the Big Ten Network, Maryland at Indiana. Uh, Maryland, they're, they're an up-and-down team. I mean, they just won at Wisconsin. Then they came home and got beat by Michigan pretty thoroughly. Uh, Indiana, they're, uh, you know, Indiana and Maryland are probably going to be battling it out for the tournament in that they're not going to take the whole Big Ten. Uh, they're going to take most of it, but not all of it. And... These guys are probably at the bottom of the Big Ten. Um, I'm trying to think. There's one really, you know, you're usually you'd say Northwestern, but even Northwestern's better than these two. So I'm trying to think, who is it? Who's at the bottom of Probably Penn State, I guess. But even they're pretty good. Anyway, Indiana, they just beat Penn State in overtime. Uh, that, that, I think, has got them somewhat heading in the correct direction. <clears throat> the game's at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. Uh, I, I just think this is a game that Indiana's got to have. They think they know they need this game. 
You know, you can't lose at home uh, in the Big Ten this year when you've got a team you can beat, like Maryland, coming in to your house. You got to get that game uh, because, uh, you know, it's going to be hard to beat. You know, there's not too many teams you're going to be able to beat if you're in Indiana. <coughs> not too many teams you're going to be able to beat in the Big Ten if you're in Indiana. So you better get this one. And I th I'm going to say they are. You know, I'm going to say Indiana is going to get this game. Two stars on that. And then lastly, we're going to go into SWAC. <coughs> the SWAC. And we all know you throw the record book out when Prairie View A&M is playing Alcorn State. But the way we're looking at this, Prairie View uh, just played TCU and almost beat them. Only lost by a handful of points. Alcorn State just played Baylor and they lost by over 30. And I just think that kind of, you know, you just lost to a really good team by a lot. And I don't think that helps you. I don't think that helps you get better. Uh, so we like Prairie View. I think they're... <coughs> Excuse me. We're outside here in a barn. So maskers, COVID people. Nobody's here to be infected. So don't get your panties in a bunch. Uh, we're going to lay the six and a half with Prairie View. And think that will be good enough. So three plays there. Hampton getting three and a half. We like that a lot. That's a tough uh, top play. Then we're going to lay five at home with Indiana. And we're going to lay six and a half on the road with Prairie View A&M. Okay, thanks. We appreciate everybody that's been here. Apologize the last video. The sound sucked. We're still, God, one year into making these videos. And we're still, you know, trying to get the technical settings right on all this uh, uh, microphones and videos, and bit rates and uh, frame rates and everything else. So, well, Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, but thanks, we appreciate everybody uh, uh, takes the time to watch the videos. Let's get some picks going. Let's get back on the winning track. We appreciate it from me to you. Good luck, good gambling, good college basketball, good betting, goodbye.